Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. During the conversation, the wife decided to admit mistakes, but for what? Today's story will tell you about it. Enjoy watching it. After I stared at the baby for a while, I swore she was staring back at me. I waved to her and headed back to Lena's room. When I entered, she was sitting on the bed, and it seemed she was waiting for me. I could tell she was nervous. The doctors wanted to x-ray my ankle to see if the cast could be removed, she blurted out. I just stood there, trying very hard to remain neutral. Dan, I know you're angry, she said. I wasn't honest with you at all. I was just afraid, and I needed to make sure you weren't mad at me, at least until she was born and hopefully until I took the cast off. I just looked at her, refusing to talk. Okay, Danny, we need to talk. If you want to kick me out of your house, fine, but I need to be honest with you. It's time for us to talk again. My facial expression didn't change, I just glared at her. So she continued, Danny, I'm sorry I said that. Do you know how much I suffered all week? I've been reading stories about mothers who died in childbirth. I didn't know what to expect. All I knew was that it hurt terribly, and the painkillers weren't helping at all. I thought I might die. So when the doctor told me to just say whatever came to mind, it just came out. I'm sorry if this hurts you, but it's true. I don't regret saying it. If you want to kick me out for telling the truth, that's fine. You can stay here as long as you want, I spat. I will survive what you said, just don't make it a habit. Apparently, that wasn't what she wanted to hear. She lowered her head as if she were ashamed or hurt. Danny, what are you mad about? She asked. I can feel the anger coming off you in waves. You could have killed her. I spat. You and that man you slept with, haven't you thought about what poor nutrition can do to her? She is the smallest girl in the department. Even some premature babies are bigger than her. How can we be sure she will be okay? All we can do is hope and pray, she replied. I will hope. Maybe we can ask your parents to pray if something happens to her. Danny, you can't blame Sebastian for this. He left before I found out I was pregnant. He had already been missing for at least three weeks. I tried to contact my parents. They didn't want anything to do with me. They didn't even give me a chance to tell them I was pregnant. Do you know how painful it is when your own parents turn their backs on you? Anyway, the next try went wrong too. Danny, you see, after my parents refused me, I came to you. Nonsense. I shouted. I had never heard of you until the day I saw you on the street. And why would you even come to me? Oh yes, I'm here, she blurted out. It was about seven weeks after I left. I went to the doctors and then found out that I was pregnant. I went because I felt very bad. Well, I felt worse. I felt bad since the day I left you. I knew from the day I left our apartment that I was making the biggest mistake of my life. But once I told you, I couldn't go back. I knew you wouldn't even talk to me. So anyway, after talking to my parents, I decided to just go with my feelings and let you know how stupid I was, hoping that you had at least an ounce of love left for me. She took a deep breath. I was surprised that my key still worked. I opened the door and entered the apartment. I called you, but no one answered. I thought maybe you were out for a run or maybe you weren't at home. But after a few moments, I started hearing sounds and realized that you were actually home but busy. At first, I only recognized your voice and realized that you were enjoying yourself. You didn't sit and wait for me to return, that's for sure. But I realized that you have the right to try to find someone else. After all, I tried to. But Danny, what I did, as strange as it may sound, was not my fault. I was out of my mind when I left you. Then I recognized the second voice. I couldn't believe she could do this to me. I walked up to the bedroom, and the door wasn't even closed all the way. You had a night with my sister, Danny, she said. You were in our bed with her. No wonder she hates me now. She knows how confusing it all is. She also knows how I still feel about you. That's why she's so damn scared to be around me. I know I ruined our marriage, Danny. I know this much better than you. I also know that I will do everything to fix this. Kim knows this too, which is why she just doesn't want to be around me. 
Our loud voices and screams attracted people into the room. We looked away from each other and realized that several nurses were standing there, looking at us. We're fine, Lena said. Danny and I just needed to vent. Three days later, we left the hospital and brought Ella home. During this time, we did not discuss our fight or any other things that we needed to discuss. It would be another two weeks before the cast was removed from Lena's ankle. She was healing well, but the doctors told her not to put any weight on it. This meant that I spent a lot of time moving Ella back and forth from her crib to Lena. I also started feeding her, and soon I began to change her clothes. This led to me carrying her in my arms and rocking her to sleep at night. These two weeks flew by quickly, and finally, the day came when the cast was to be removed from Lena's ankle. I held Ella while they cut the cast from Lena's leg. Ella and I watched as they peeled the hard white shell off her ankle, and Lena began scratching it as if it were full of ants. They put on a large walking bandage and told her to be very careful for the next two weeks, but that it wouldn't hurt her to walk. They gave her a pair of crutches and sent her home. All the nurses who knew us came to see Ella, they cooed at her and smiled. On the way home, Lena looked at Ella while I drove the car. Strangely, I was so excited to take this little joy home that the thought of the baby seat warping the Mustang's leather back seat didn't cross my mind. I can't believe the cast is finally off my ankle, she said. Don't get stupid, I warned. I've already been told that I have to make sure you do your exercises. You need to strengthen the joint and increase its flexibility. Yes, yes, she smiled. You know what I want to do first? At first, I really thought it wasn't about me. In fact, I regretted saying it as soon as the words left my mouth. Find some strange guy and have an intimate with him, I spat. The look of pain and horror on her face told me everything I needed to know. I hurt her badly. I don't know if that was my intention or, as she claimed in the hospital, if it just came out. When we got home, I tried to carry her into the house as usual, but she told me to let her get used to the crutch and try to walk. Once we got into the house and I put Ella to bed, I headed back to the living room to apologize. Even though I meant it when I said it, it was not a kind deed. If I wanted to keep Ella with me as long as possible, I needed to keep the peace between me and Lena. I returned to the living room and saw her crying. I slowly walked up to her and hugged her. She returned the hug and started crying even harder. I'm so sorry, Lena, I said. It was a childish and thoughtless statement. It's not just that, she said, holding up a piece of paper for me to look at. Our divorce papers have arrived. Now I'm really not your wife anymore, she said sadly. I just hugged her and held her while she cried. That's good, I said. Now you are not trapped with me. You might actually find someone you want to be with. She pushed away from me angrily. Don't you understand that I want to be with you, stupid Danny? You can be such an idiot sometimes. I already told you that from the day I left home, I regretted it. I left a man who loved me for a man who was just using me. She looked at me. I know you don't want to hear this. I know you don't care about any of this, but Sebastian never loved me, and I never loved him. He was a fraud. He fed me all this crap about pooling our resources. He gave me access to his bank accounts, and I gave him access to mine. He urged me not to go to work, at least once or twice a week. He said that I could do some of the work from home, and I did it. I hated having a night with him, and after the first few times, I always made excuses. He didn't insist, so apparently, it wasn't very pleasant for him either. He always said that love is more important than night and that he loves me. I didn't know that Sebastian had overheard women at work talking about me. He misunderstood. It was just a joke. Everyone who knew us always talked about how much you loved me, Danny. They always said that I'm worth a million dollars. Over time, it dwindled, and they just said she's worth a million dollars. Sebastian heard this several times and did not understand the context. He thought I had a million dollars and decided to steal me from you. Once he got access to my bank accounts, he discovered that I didn't have nearly as much money. It didn't bother him, he just stole everything I had and forged my co-signature on the car loan and some other things, leaving me with debts. He also stole computer passwords and money from some of my work accounts, therefore, I will never be able to work in banking again. In any case, he didn't even leave a note, he just disappeared. 
I never meant to hurt you, Danny, so when I left, I left you everything we had. I thought that since Sebastian is rich, I didn't need anything. It turned out that we were living in a luxury apartment illegally, he knew the building manager and stole the keys. When they found out I was in the apartment, they arrested me, and now I have a criminal record. I couldn't find the words. Do you know what the worst part of all of this was, Danny? She asked. The worst part wasn't that he took all my money and ruined my career. I don't care about money or work. The worst part was that I was stupid enough to let him separate us. There's something else you really should know about all of this, but I'll leave that for later. There are two more things I want to tell you right now. She looked me in the eyes and simply said it. The first thing I want you to know is that you shouldn't be mad about what I said. Danny, you care, she chuckled. The only thing that makes you a stranger is that you were next to me for six damn weeks and didn't realize it. The second thing I want to tell you is what I actually talked about in the car. The thing I really want to do is get in the damn pool. She smiled. You will have to look after the child. I've been waiting for this moment since I first saw him, Lena. This won't happen, I said. So wait a minute, are you telling me I can't use your pool, or are you telling me you won't watch the baby while I do this? She answered sharply, let me guess, now that I can move around a little, you've decided that I can take care of my baby on my own. Lena, if we're going to do this, we really have to learn to talk to each other and listen to each other. Kim once told me that she thought I needed counseling to help me deal with you. Perhaps we both need counseling to try to get over all the terrible things that have happened to us. If we decide to do this, I will pay for it. Then why can't I get into the pool? She asked calmly. First of all, because I'm worried that you'll put stress on your ankle on the first day, I said. Her face softened a little. And secondly, because there is no water in it. I drained it. I had nightmares about Ella falling into it. Lena just started laughing. Danny, how can she get in there if she can't even crawl yet? She can't even roll over or sit up on her own. Will you keep an eye on her while I use your hot tub? I nodded as she used crutches to hobble away from me, muttering and laughing under her breath. The next year flew by quickly. Ella grew by leaps and bounds. She was tiny but healthy and smarter than most children her age. In the first couple of months, Lena and I hardly quarreled. We had too much to do. Mrs. Hayes retired, and Lena took charge of the house and looked after Ella while I worked. She went to her consultant, and I went to mine. We didn't discuss this much. We had incidents and dealt with them. After Lena began cleaning the house, she suddenly came up to me and handed me a box. I didn't realize how much intim you needed, she blurted. Lena, what are you talking about? I asked. Danny, you probably don't know this, but I have a collection. My collection is starting to get to me now. I'm tired of collecting them. Give these back to my sister. I opened the box, and there were at least seven or eight pairs of panties. Why are you giving this to Kim? I asked. Because it's hers, she replied sharply. I found them in almost every room of the house. What was she doing, marking her territory? I can imagine her going around the house like dogs marking every tree in the area. Should I also leave my panties in the places where I found her, or should we just have a night in these rooms so that I have the right to do so? Mrs. Hayes must have been a terrible cleaner if she didn't find them, or maybe you were sneaking Kim here. I told you I don't mind if she comes, after all, this is your home, but damn no matter how hard she tried. Lena burst into tears and began to cry. I hugged her and let her cry. Lena, since you moved here, I haven't brought anyone here, I said. I think, like you said, Mrs. Hayes probably didn't know how to tell me, so she just left them where she found them. I feel like you already knew this, so why are you making such a big deal out of it? Because I hate it, she screamed. She screamed so loudly that she woke Ella. At the first sound of Ella's voice, I instantly left. I came back holding Ella and rocking her. She was smiling again and holding her favorite toy. I took the bottle and held it while Lena followed us. We're not done, Lena said. Danny, there are things we really need to discuss, and hiding behind Ella isn't helping. At this moment, Ella was very pleased. Both people in her life were close. She had her favorite chewed up soft toy and a bottle of juice. At that moment, she chose to say her first word. 
Yes, she blurted out. I saw Lena smile even as I felt a dagger stabbing into my heart. I very gently handed Ella over to Lena and turned to leave. Danny, where are you going? Lena asked. Maybe I should hire a private investigator, I said. I will hire someone to find her dad, and then all our problems will be solved. You three can be a great little family, and Kim can leave her panties all over the house. Lena quickly approached me with fire in her eyes. Danny, she's a baby. She doesn't know what she's doing. All she knows is that you are the one she wants. You make her feel loved and cared for, and despite all this crap, even this baby knows you love her. It didn't change anything for her mother, did it? I spat. She froze and just stood there. Her mother knew that I loved her and took care of her too, but she still left for another man. Why should it be any different with Ella? After a tense moment, she started again. Danny, I deserved it, but she didn't. What does it matter what she calls you? You were with her every minute of her life. You're the only dad she knows. Don't deprive her of that because of something stupid I did. I'm already paying for it. Don't make Ella pay too. Lena, you left me and abandoned our marriage without any warning. You didn't even tell me what I did wrong, I spat. You told me that you met someone and you want to be with him. This is all forget about everything we've been through together. Forget about how I treated you. That's all? I will meet you in six months and pull you out from under the car, take you to the hospital, and care for you and your baby, restoring your health and giving you a place to live. How exactly were you punished? I asked. No one was punished except me, Lena. Not you, not the magical, just me. She couldn't find an answer to that, so I left. Over the next few months, whenever I became irritable or nervous, Lena would come to me. What's wrong, Danny? She asked. You and Kim can't meet. There's a simple answer to that, you know. Please don't start, Lena, I said. Danny, why don't you just have an intimate with me? She asked. I'm a grown woman, I have needs too. And at least with me, you won't have to worry about who else I'm sleeping with. At least with Kim, I don't have to worry about being overwhelmed again, I replied. I made one mistake, Danny, she said. One mistake, and I'll never get a second chance. Kim has probably had 20 other boyfriends since you two started dating. I slept with the same guy twice, and I was excluded from your heart forever. And Danny, despite what everyone thinks, I'm not a woman of easy virtue. I came to you and told you about Sebastian before I slept with him, so I never cheated on you. I loved you too much for that. Yes, you love me so much that you just left me. You didn't even give me a chance to fight for you. She just said she found another guy and left, I said. One good thing that happened was that I actually took Ella to visit her grandparents, and just as I thought, they melted when I walked into their house with Ella in my arms. Lena's mother took one look at her and just started crying. I put Ella on the floor and let her crawl to her grandmother, and that was enough. Ella, can you say grandma? I asked her. Baba, she said, smiling and showing her rare teeth. Around Christmas, the whole family gathered at my house for a very busy family dinner. The exchange of gifts was extremely strange. Lena's parents bought Ella many gifts, me too. Even her Aunt Kim bought her a huge teddy bear, which first scared her and then became her best friend. Kim also tried to lighten the mood a little by giving Lena a bottle of her favorite perfume, but that's where it all ended. Lena and Kim barely spoke, and Lena's parents were still very angry with her, but it was a start. After they left, I gave Lena my own gift as she started clearing the table. She smiled at me and told me that her mom hugged her before she left and her dad told her goodbye. This is progress, she said. In a couple of years, we might be friends again. Do you want to open your gifts? I have no gifts, she said. But as long as my baby is okay, I'm happy. You have a few for me, I said. She looked under the tree and began to unpack the gifts. I bought her an iPhone, a couple of outfits, and a gold necklace. Thank you, Danny, she beamed. There are two more, I said, handing her a box and an envelope. She opened the envelope and pulled out a check. Danny, why are you giving me money? It's $10,000, Lena. 
Everyone needs money for an emergency or to start a new life, I told her. She opened the box and found a small house inside. She looked at me strangely. It seemed like she couldn't understand what was happening. Danny, I don't understand, she said. Lena, a few months ago, you asked me how long you would be punished, I said. I thought about it. I'm going to help you find a house and pay rent for a year. During this time, you can start to build a new life. Danny, you're the biggest fool in the world, she said. She dropped the house and ran out of the room crying. I sat and watched as Ella played with her new bear. It was really fun to watch her. She seemed to play more with the wrappers and boxes than with some of the toys. She took one of the empty boxes and placed it on the bear's lap, jumping back as if she expected the bear to move. After watching and playing with Ella for a while, I noticed that Lena had returned to the room and was watching me watch Ella. Danny, I've decided to accept your gifts, she said. I smiled at her and replied, you will indeed accept gifts from a fool. Yes, she smiled. I have already chosen a house that I would like to rent. Here is the address. She handed me a strip of paper. I looked at her. Lena, this is the house we're in, I said. I'll rent it for a year if you live in it with me and Ella, she said. I tore up the check. I don't have a bank account, so keep it in your account until I leave. Now, she said, I have a gift for you too. This is something you used to really like. Is this turtle wax? I asked, recognizing the familiar product. I only use turtle wax on my car. I tried Miguiar's products but was not satisfied. Some Armor All products are also quite good, I really like their tire gel. Even I have to admit it's better than Turtle Wax Ice Ultra Shine. That's all good, Danny, she said, but I had something else in mind. Something that will have to wait until Ella falls asleep. At that moment, I felt awkward, and it showed. I don't know why I didn't just tell her about it, but I didn't. Women are good at sensing things like that, and suddenly she was angry. So you can have a night with my sister all over the house, and I'm not your match, right? She said. What's the matter? Are you choosing her just because she has bigger breasts, or because she allows you to do any nasty things to her? I thought intimate was the way people express their love for each other. At least that's what you told me when we were married. I didn't know it was just about fighting each other like a couple of monkeys. Well, since you started it, I said. Maybe it's because Kim and I don't love each other the way you and I were supposed to love each other. Kim and I only date to meet our physical needs. You and I were magic, Lena. I got turned on just by being around you because I loved you so much that it hurt to be apart. I really felt like we were a part of each other. And then suddenly, Danny, I met someone else and I want to be with him. Can you imagine how painful this is? Do you understand how wrong this is and how it makes me feel? So forgive me if the thought of sleeping with you doesn't make me want to, but I have my reasons. Danny, my therapist, who you pay all this money to, has several opinions about why I did what I did, and some of them are physical. She also says that we need to try to get back to a normal relationship. She told me that the first few times will be terrible and that we probably won't make it, but that we should keep trying if we want this to work. And then she made a mistake, I interrupted. Who said we want this to work? Who said anything about returning to normal relationships? When did this become one of our goals? What are our goals anyway? Do we have the same goals, Danny? What do you think we're doing? She shouted. Of course we want this to work. We should be together. We will raise our family and do everything we always planned. Our goal is to return to the way things were before. I admit that I destroyed us. I was wrong, Danny. I was out of my mind and didn't realize it until it was too late to come back. Even when I realized this, I thought that I should make the best of the situation. But after sleeping with him, even once, I realized that I was at a dead end. I knew it would never work, and it didn't. In a way, his departure was a blessing, but that's all in the past. The new year is coming, Danny. We must leave the past behind. Okay, I said. Now I know what your goals are. My others? I just want to make the best of a really lousy situation. Just like with your psychiatrist. I don't want to go into how I see the situation, but I see things differently than you do. I just want to feel normal again. 
I really wish I could get you out of my head and out of my heart. Ever since we broke up, or since you left me, I've had all sorts of problems. I doubted myself for a while, but thanks to many friends, including Kimmy, I regained my confidence and began to move on. One of the biggest things I couldn't get rid of, Lena, is the us. I still hold you in my mind and heart as something special, even if it's not true. My mind and heart think it is. I still have warm and fuzzy memories of how things were between us, and I can't get rid of them. I guess to really get rid of them, I'd have to take them apart and show how wrong they were, but at the moment I think that would do more harm than good. I'm going step by step. It's like when you fall off a horse. There are only two ways to overcome this. One way is to avoid horses for the rest of your life. Hell, I know people who don't watch the Kentucky Derby or Cowboy movies because they're too afraid of horses. Another way is to get back on the horse and stay on it until the fear goes away. That's what I'm doing. Instead of walking around afraid of ever running into you, I force myself to see you, be around you, and talk to you until you become just another person to me. I still think intimate with you is somehow magical and meant so much more to me than with other people. I think in my mind I made it too big, except for the last time when it seemed like you weren't into it. My mind seems to think that intimate with you is some kind of miracle. She snorted. Lena, on a purely physical level, I don't think that was the case, but I'm based only on the facts. Emotions are what confuse me. I said, our minds and emotions really do fail us sometimes, don't they? She replied, you don't even realize how stupid you sound. You embellished your words, you gave me a lot of analogies and nonsense, but what you really meant came across clearly. You said you still love me, but you don't want this, and you're afraid that I'll hurt you again. You're trying to get over it, but you think that if we have a night, it will either be special and magical, which means you're really screwed because then you will be stuck and will have to put up with a woman of easy virtue and keep her close, or there's a chance that if we have an intimate and it's not very good, it will mean that you wasted your life on a woman of easy virtue who wasn't worth your attention. It's more complicated, I said. Really? She asked. Maybe you just want it to be like this. Maybe you're just afraid to find out. Maybe you're so afraid that you've decided to spend the rest of your life with women you don't care about because you're afraid of what will happen when you get back to where you're supposed to be. Maybe I'm just afraid of the long-term consequences of undetected diseases, I spat. Besides, you once said that your sister marks her territory by leaving her panties all over the house. This made you very angry. This is the same thing that dogs do when they smell another dog in their trees. What do dogs do? They mark the same trees and leave their scent, don't they? Well, I'm not territorial like a dog, I am human. I think that if something belongs to me, it is mine because it belongs to me. I don't have to go around and mark other dogs' trees when I see that something belongs to someone else. I just find mine. Mr. Charming or Sebastian or whatever his name is tagged my tree. He marked you as his when he had intim with you. If you ever let me meet him or find out who he is, I'd probably want to deal with him, but I never got that chance. His way was a cowardly way of staying in the shadows. I don't do that. You are his. I will find mine. Daniel. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, she said. I have never belonged to anyone other than you in my life. You're going through all this stupid pain for nothing. Someday you'll realize I made a damn mistake and we'll have to deal with it. Someday we will regret the time we wasted because of this. At the same time, I said, someday you will realize that the mistake you made was deciding to leave and have an intimate with another guy. And Danny, I told you it was a mistake at least a hundred times, she cried. Yes, I said quietly, but someday you will understand that some mistakes we simply cannot overcome. Never. She looked like she wanted to say something, but she simply turned and headed to her room, quietly closing the door. That evening when I went to bed, I could still hear her crying. I wanted to say something to make her feel better, but I couldn't say anything. In some ways, she was right, I was afraid of her. She was the only woman I ever truly loved and she was right about the night I had with Kim being purely therapeutic. For some time, we found ourselves in a vicious circle. Lena began walking around the house wearing less and less clothing. It just didn't work out the way she wanted. Like most younger sisters, Kimmy had to answer to her older sibling, so from time to time she called and asked Lena to continue doing what she was doing. 
Lena cried and then called me names, saying that I was a coward. I only slept with Kim because I was afraid of the real thing. Then, confident that I wanted her, she began to wear even less clothing. I don't know how it would have ended if nature had not intervened. It was a warm spring evening when everything went to hell. Lena decided that the three of us, she, Ella, and I, should have a nice family dinner on the deck, and then we should all play in the pool together. I had recently started to get over my fear of Ella being near the pool, but only if I was with her. It was a wonderful evening. Lena had been hugging me a lot more often lately, and that evening she was with me everywhere. I've always loved Lena's body, so when she came back in that white swimsuit, I have to admit that my mouth dropped open. Lena looked at me and smiled. But you always liked my fifth place, didn't you, Dan? She whispered. Things got worse when she went into the pool and then came out with water pouring off of her. Then I noticed that in the fading light of the sun, the water made the swimsuit transparent. It looked like she wasn't wearing a swimsuit at all. I see you like something, Dan, she asked. The waves of heat emanating from her were not due to the temperature. Can you watch Ella for a few minutes? I asked. I need to do something. Why play by yourself when we can play together, she said. Ella is already starting to fall asleep, and in a few minutes, we will be alone. We could, um, relax here on the deck together. This could be the start of something new for us. We've never done this outside, but if you prefer to play by yourself, I'm just going to make a call. I replied sharply, tell my sister hi. She laughed and said, tell her she can come see her niece. I called Kim, and her voice immediately perked up as soon as she found out it was me. Hello, son-in-law, she said. Do you want to book my services for the weekend? I was thinking about something more urgent, I said. Sorry, darling, those are the same days. But if you are interested in just hugging me and making me feel good, under normal circumstances, I would love to, I lied. But your sister walks around here in this white swimsuit. All I heard was laughter on the phone. But she really can't fill out a swimsuit, especially the top, Kim said. Yeah, but he seems to like what I have, Lena said. Lena, put the phone away, I said sharply. I heard a click and then more laughter from the other room. After I hung up, Lena entered the living room. Are you sure you don't want to hug her and make her feel good? She laughed. Shut up, Lena, I shouted. I was just worried about your well-being, dear, she chuckled. My door is always open and I'm always ready to help you with any problems you may have especially if I caused them. I avoided Lena for the rest of the evening. Her knowing glances and sarcastic comments only made me more irritable. I ran into her once around 1 p.m. when I went to the kitchen to get a drink. Now you know how I feel when you go to bed with my sister, she said. I ignored her. For me, it's ten times worse, she said. I have to watch the person I love leave to do something with someone else that I would do for him in a heartbeat. It's still not as bad as when the person you love tells you he's leaving because he wants to be with someone else, I replied. I come home to you and Ella every time, and you always know that I will come back. It's not the same as being told that the person you love most in the world loves someone else and that you don't matter. She left the room. Later that evening, as I was tossing and turning in bed, I heard my door open. Lena did this sometimes. She would open the door and say something like, on your way home, stop by for some milk. Ella drinks about a liter of milk a day, and we're running low. Or other times, it might be, Dan, I know it pisses you off when I say this, but I love you. This really drove me crazy. So when the door creaked open, I expected her to say this or something else. Then the door just closed, and she didn't say anything. The room was silent for a few moments. Then the sheet lifted, and someone slid into bed with me. This is blind. We made love. Okay, Danny, I know I said we didn't need to discuss this, but I just need to know. What do you need to know? Lena, I asked. Did you like it? Was it even close to how it was with my sister? Was it as good as you remember it? Before she asked, I suddenly felt angrier than I had ever been in my life. Get out of my room, Lena, I spat. I got up and headed to the bathroom. What did I say? She asked, tears streaming down her face. She followed me without anything into the bathroom, 
and I had to admit that just the sight of that tone without clothes body turned me on again. Danny, don't do this, she cried. What was wrong? Don't push me away. Tell me what I did wrong so I don't do it again. I wasn't confused by your first question, I said scornfully. I was going to answer that one. I was going to answer the second one too, but the third one, you should probably leave. All I asked was if it was as good as it used to be, she said. What was so bad about it? I was worried about it, you know? A woman's body changes after pregnancy, and I wanted to be really good for you. I wasn't trying to challenge your magical memories because I have them too, darling, but tonight was. Lena, the word that ruined everything was earlier. That one word put everything into context for me, I said sharply. What you meant was before you started sleeping with that man. Before you let that idiot get you pregnant. Before you decided I wasn't right for you. Before. Why did you decide that everything we had meant nothing? Thank you for reminding me why I decided that we couldn't be together anymore. She just stood there without anything, looking at me with tears running down her face. It wasn't supposed to be like this, she said angrily. You got it all wrong. I keep telling you it was a mistake. No, Lena, I said sharply. Tonight was a mistake. Just keep your promise and never talk about it again. To hell with you, Danny, she screamed. There was no mistake. Tonight was the best night of my life. It was perfect, and you know it. I'll keep my promise, but you'll be thinking about this night for a long time. We both know you won't be happy again having a night with my sister. You won't be happy with anyone else but me, for the same reason I'm not happy with anyone else but you. We love each other. Man, come to my room. But don't worry, I won't try to hurt you. All you have to do is come and take me any time you want me. I'm yours, but you'll have to come and take it. With those words, she left my room without anything and walked down the corridor. She never looked prettier. I don't know if it was the way her fifth place swayed as she walked, but if I hadn't been so angry at my inability to resist her, I would have followed her right then and there. The next morning, everything was as usual. Lena got up and prepared breakfast for me, and as promised, she didn't mention last night. As we were eating, her robe fell open, revealing that she was wearing a white swimsuit. She smiled at me, letting me know she was aware of everything that had happened. I thought that since it's going to be even hotter today, Ella and I would spend some time in the pool while we wait for you to come home, she said. You liked that swimsuit yesterday, so I decided to wear it again for you. I almost choked on my toast and looked at her, thinking I needed to be careful. She continued, no other man will ever see me in this swimsuit. You probably haven't noticed, but when it gets wet, you can see everything. Make sure you hold Ella tightly while she's in the pool. I tried to change the subject. Danny, she's my daughter, Lena said. Just remember the last thing I told you last night. I did remember, and that was the problem. She was right, it lasted almost a week before I called Kim. We met at a motel downtown during lunch. We both had jobs where we didn't have to report to anyone, so the occasional late lunch wouldn't cause any issues. I tried to pretend everything was normal because I didn't want to hurt Kim's feelings, but I knew I was in trouble. Sooner or later, I would end up in Lena's room. Lena didn't make it any easier, she constantly told me how much she loved me and left little hints. She would bend down to pick up one of Ella's toys and look over to see me staring at her fifth place. I lasted almost three weeks. It was even harder because I hadn't slept with Kim since then. I still remember pacing back and forth in front of Lena's room for at least ten minutes. Finally, when I thought I could hold out a little longer, the door opened and she looked at me. Danny, are you going to come in or not? She asked. Her tone was neither accusatory nor harsh, it was pleading and desperate. I realized that she wanted me there as much as I wanted to be there. Before I could say anything, she upped the ante. I promise we won't have to talk about it this time, she said. I gave up and went into her room, thinking, I'm lost, I'm completely lost again. She seemed to need more contact. After we were done, she wrapped her arms around me and said, Don't talk, Danny, just sleep. The next morning, she was beaming from ear to ear. She even kissed me goodbye before I left for work, and I let her. Everything went on like this for about three months. 
On the surface, we were a happy couple with an adorable almost three-year-old daughter, but inside, we were not. We were not married and didn't share the same room. We only slept in the same bed on the nights we had a night, which was about once every two weeks. She, of course, wanted more, much more, and told me about it, but I resisted with all my might. I was still holding on to the old adage that once a cheater, always a cheater. Even if, technically, Lena wasn't cheating on me, she had come and told me she wanted to be with someone else. Maybe it was pride more than anything else that kept me from admitting I just wanted us to get through this. She had slept with Sebastian several times, she said, and I had slept with several women many times, including her sister. Were we equal? I had actually slept with Kim even after we got back together, and Lena just had to deal with it. In fact, Lena didn't know that when she and I got back together, I stopped sleeping with Kim. She discovered this when Kim showed up a few months later with a guy she wanted to introduce to us. She claimed this guy could be the one. Lena slapped Kim, and I was forced to separate them. You must have a very good reason to hit me, sister, Kim spat. Because I'm seriously considering kicking your fifth place. Lena was even angrier. How dare you hurt Danny by bringing some other guy right in his face? Lena snapped. Kim burst out laughing. She's really stupid, isn't she? She laughed. How stupid am I? Lena asked. Danny and I aren't sleeping together anymore, Kim said. We stopped as soon as you two started again. What? Lena smiled. Why didn't anyone tell me? Lena was so happy that we thought she was going to place an ad in the newspaper. In her mind, we were more or less fixed. I still wasn't so sure. She started coming to my room to sleep even when we weren't having an intim, and we began having intimate almost regularly. I have to admit that I was torn, but the opportunity to deal with this situation came in the strangest of circumstances. At that time, I quickly discovered that one of the responsibilities of my new job was to represent the company and even give presentations. There was a big conference coming up, and my boss told me that I would be making a presentation on our company's new product lines, along with a brief discussion of our new manufacturing process. I was a little scared at first but realized that this could be another opportunity for advancement. He emailed me a copy of the conference brochure, and I saw that there would be some important people there, not only from our industry but from many different types of businesses. Again, I realized that this could be a great opportunity for me. I could develop connections that could be beneficial in the future. As I looked through the brochure, my heart suddenly went cold. On one of the pages, there was information about one of the speakers. She was a venture capitalist from New York. Her family owned parts of several large banks. Her name was Maggie Stevenson, and for an older woman, she was incredibly beautiful. But it wasn't her beauty that attracted me. It was the last line in the paragraph. The one that said she would be represented by her fiancé, Sebastian Shaw, a former resident of our area who had moved to New York. The show returned to our area for a conference. I think they meant it as some sort of local boy success story, but to me, it was like waving a red flag in front of an already raging bull. Could it really be him? But damn, how many men are there with the name Sebastian? My brain started working at full capacity. I made diagrams and plans while I wrote my speech. I immediately abandoned some of the plans. The idea to cut it into thousands of inch cubes and feed them to the sharks was immediately discarded, as was the plan where I would chain him to a rocket and send him into space. Those were just not practical. Making him dig his own grave and then beating him with the same shovel seemed satisfying but also provided too many opportunities for rest. In the end, I decided that Sebastian wasn't the one I should be mad at. After all, he did not take an oath to love and respect me, Lena did. She was the one who broke our vows, not some idiot I've never met. In fact, the only thing Sebastian had that I needed was the right to make decisions in Ella's life. Sebastian was who I wanted to be. Although he had never seen Ella, he could appear out of nowhere and start demanding to see her. Fathers, even dead ones, are given certain rights that I, although I was with her every second of her life, did not have. Lena could get angry at me and leave, taking Ella with her, and I would have no rights. One of my plans was to meet Sebastian at a meeting and get him to sign a document relinquishing parental rights to Ella. I planned to attack him from several fronts. First, 
I would explain to him that I had been paying all of his daughter's expenses since her birth and before and that I was considering suing him for the unpaid money. Plus, he would be required to pay a portion of her expenses until her 18th birthday. On the other hand, I would tell him that if he just signed a waiver of parental rights for a child he had never met, I would pay him all the money I could raise, which would probably be about $51,000. It would be his choice, since he was getting married to a fairly wealthy woman, I was sure he wouldn't want the details of why he left town to surface. So maybe I could get him to sign a waiver without having to give him all my money if I just continued paying Ella's expenses. This little girl was everything to me. The only thing I had to do after that was convince Lena to let me adopt her. Then no one could ever take her away from me. Even if Lena and I couldn't get along and she went to some other guy, I would have visitation rights. And speaking of Lena, it would be good for her too. The second part of my plan involved taking Lena with me to the conference and letting her know that Sebastian would be there. I called my lawyer and asked him to prepare the documents I would need to both threaten legal action against Sebastian and have him sign away his parental rights. The second part was much easier. When I came home in the evening, I told Lena about the conference. She was very excited for me when I told her what this could mean. I pretended to leave the brochure on the table as I started to fire up the grill. This was the first time we had ever discussed anything related to my work, so she was thrilled to be included in it. I think she thought I was trying to involve her more in my life, and she liked it. She looked at the brochure while I played with Ella and worked on the stakes. I watched her face out of the corner of my eye as she read. When she reached the middle of the page, her eyes suddenly became huge. She looked at me and noticed that I was busy with Ella. Danny, did you read the whole brochure? She asked. No, I just got it today, I said. I just brought it home for you. She suddenly felt nervous. Why did you bring it home for me, Danny? I didn't know anything about it. How would I know? Lena, what are you talking about? I asked. I brought the brochure home because I wanted to ask you to come with me. I've never given a speech in front of a large audience before, and I wanted someone to be there with me. Besides, in a way, since you're not going to leave, it concerns both of us. Damn it, she said. I will never leave you again, but I will gladly be your companion. She looked like she was about to cry, and then she threw herself into my arms. What happened, Lena? I asked. This is the first time you've invited me somewhere with you since we got back together, she muttered, burying her face in my chest and starting to cry. Lena, you'll have to find a dress that will blow them away, I said. This brought her to her senses, and she started smiling at me. Hey, I have to look good. I'll be there for you. Don't worry, Danny. I handed her my credit card and returned to Ella. Ten days before the conference, I decided to follow her. The next day, I noticed that something had changed in her face. She seemed, I don't know, more radiant. She smiled more and seemed to want intimate more. I realized what was about to happen and knew I needed to be prepared. The big question was how she would try to do it. Would Lena just try to meet Sebastian and tell him about Ella and then go to him, or would she limit herself to a few days with him, hoping that I wouldn't find out? I thought she would probably choose the latter. She was, as she said, honest for the first time, and it almost destroyed her. So, she'd probably try to get him back secretly. She hoped that he would want her with Ella, but if not, they would have spent a couple of days together and agreed to meet from time to time, and I would have known nothing. The difference was that I was no longer stupid and blind in love. Damn it, there was no need to get angry or act stupid about it, it really wasn't an insurmountable situation. We could actually find a solution that would make us all happy. What if Lena went to New York with Sebastian as his mistress? Sebastian could sleep with her as much as he wanted and still marry Miss Money. Lena could leave Ella with me since Sebastian was not the father. Everyone could get what they wanted, and no one would have to be hurt. I smiled at the thought. Of course, I would be a little sad losing Lena, night with her was truly special, and Lena would probably miss Ella too. But we would all make sacrifices for the greater good. Life is full of compromises and sacrifices. Damn, look at all the sacrifices I made for my Mustang. I had to sacrifice good fuel economy and pay higher insurance premiums, but it was worth it every time I stepped on the gas pedal. Besides, 
just looking at that car made me smile. By the end of the week, I was sure that Lena was behaving differently. She had all sorts of mood swings and seemed manic at times. When I thought about it, I realized that this was exactly how she acted the last time she left me. Only this time, I was ready. Fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, it won't work. By the time the conference was just three days away, I started noticing calls on my caller ID that I didn't recognize. These were local calls, judging by the area code, so I assumed that she was in contact with Sebastian and he was already in town. She started trying to kiss me often, and most of the time, she did it when we weren't even having an intim. I didn't let her kiss me because I knew what she was doing. She was doing the same thing people do before they put their pets to sleep. In the last few days before the doctor put the dog down, the owner gave the dog extra treats and played with it almost twice as much, it was a reaction to feelings of guilt. I knew her next attempt would be the same pathetic comfort night she gave me the night before she left last time. I wasn't going to fall for it again. I decided that instead of our amazing and emotional lovemaking, I would do with her what I did with Kim. The difference was that Kim liked it. The next evening, as I expected, Lena invited me to grill and have dinner by the pool. Ella repeated her cute phrases under her robe. Lena wore that same white swimsuit that drove me crazy. See something you like? I was stunned, but I kept it to myself. I'm actually a little nervous about tomorrow, I said. All my plans disappeared. I just wanted it all to end. When she came to bed and stood in the doorway with the light behind her, she was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen. I think it broke my heart again that she could be so conniving. In fact, if she was so smart, she was quite stupid. She received three more calls from that local number that day. If she was as smart as she thought, she could at least delete the call history. Not today, Lena, I said. Jesus, you're really nervous, aren't you, she asked. Well, tomorrow it will be, I replied. Can we wait until tomorrow to talk about this? I just want to sleep. She rolled over and hugged me, starting to fall asleep. Lena, I'd like to sleep alone tonight, if you don't mind, I told her. Why, she asked. Then she simply stood up and left the room. The next day, we were both nervous. Luckily, Kim came to look after Ella. I went for a run and then came back and washed the car. Lena supposedly went to get her hair done, but I didn't know where she actually was. I heard a few sentences of conversation between the sisters before getting dressed. Isn't that famous white swimsuit that drives Danny crazy? Kim asked. Yes, Lena answered. Why is he on the floor? Kim asked. Because I don't need him anymore, Lena answered. And sister, I may need your help with Danny. Depending on what happens today, he probably won't like it, but I have no choice. What are you talking about, Lena? Kim asked. You know you guys are just starting to get close again. Don't ruin it. The conference was supposed to start at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so we left a little earlier. We drove downtown to the convention center, and I found myself stopping and smiling as I drove past the spot where I had grabbed Lena and prevented her from being hit by a car. I ran my hand over my jacket pocket where I had the documents folded, ensuring they were in place. Lena took my hand and smiled. Danny, we need to talk, she said. I looked at her angrily. Why are you starting this nonsense now? I snapped. The rest of the time we were in the car, she seemed to alternate between moments of extreme joy and nervousness. I thought that on the one hand, she was happy to see Sebastian again, but on the other hand, she was nervous that I might catch her and get angry. As we walked around the convention center, her head was spinning in all directions, constantly pointing at things like flowers or decorations, but I knew who she was really looking for. Our seats were very close to the stage. We sat in the third row from the very front, surrounded by thousands of people at the conference. These were great venues. At first, we sat in our seats, although I soon had to go on stage to give a speech. There was a small room next to the stage where performers could relax before or after their performances. The plan was for Lena to sit there and watch my performance from the audience while I was on stage. I would likely remain on stage after my speech to participate in the panel discussion and answer questions from the audience. Strangely, neither of us planned to do anything after the conference. Do you want to have dinner after my speech? 
I asked her. She looked startled. I don't think so, she said. Danny, we might have other plans after. I nodded sadly as she tried to straighten my tie. I think you're sorry we didn't have an intim last night, huh? She whispered. Not at all, I said. It probably won't be any better than last time. What the hell does that mean? She snapped, her voice louder than it should have been. Several people not only heard her but also turned to look at her. I started walking toward the stage and saw a man enter the preparation room on the side of the stage. Lena looked like she had been struck by lightning. She tried to hide it, but I saw her reaction. I just shook my head and walked toward the stage. I won't get a good luck kiss, she asked. People make their own luck, I said. Besides, you should probably save your kisses for someone else. What the, she looked at me with the most puzzled expression on her face. I just ignored her and walked toward the stage. Maggie Stevenson was the final speaker for the afternoon session. She was two speakers after me. It was perfect for my plans. After what I saw, I knew who Sebastian was. He'd probably be on stage when I performed or shortly after. My plan was to stay on stage after my speech and wait for him to enter the preparation room while the next speaker spoke. When Sebastian came into the preparation room, I would confront him and arrange everything so that he signed the documents and I gave him a check or cash if necessary. I also knew that, deep in my heart, I really hoped that Lena wouldn't fall for his bait. If she could just stay away from that man, maybe in time we could even, but no, obviously this Sebastian was like catnip to her. She just couldn't resist him. Maybe she really loved me as much as she claimed, but there were things she couldn't live without. I had my Mustang, maybe Sebastian had hers. I waited while the speaker spoke in front of me. She praised the value of a series of seminars designed to help freelance salespeople increase their sales. We've all heard this a thousand times, it seemed like a scam to me. They gave you a pep talk and some self-care tips, you felt better, which boosted your confidence, and in turn, you tried harder to make the sale. As a result, you sold more. You could have done it yourself. The applause was polite when she finished, and then the host introduced my company and me. My PowerPoint presentation was preloaded into their projector. I used a laser pointer to navigate it. I performed much better than I thought. I wasn't nervous at all, I joked several times, and the audience loved it, stopping several times to answer questions about our products or the benefits of a new manufacturing process. I answered so many questions that the host reminded the audience that there were other speakers and there would be time for questions during the panel discussion. I saw that my boss and the CEO of our company were in the audience, giving me a thumbs up. Part of the reason I was so talkative and relaxed was that I really didn't care about the performance anymore. The whole time I was on stage, I was watching Lena, who was watching Sebastian. I finished and received thunderous applause just as she stood up and followed that man into the preparation room. That's it for our future together, I thought angrily. I immediately saw Red and stood up to follow her. Asterisk last time I let them play their dirty game. I wasn't going to put up with that crap this time, asterisk I left the stage and calmly walked toward the preparation room. It took a few moments to get from the stage to the other side of the room, which should give them time to get started. I pulled the door open and closed it behind me. The room was much larger than I thought, and the light was dim. Listen, Sebastian. I shouted. To hell with you and with her. You can take this woman of easy virtue, I'm done with her. If you sign these documents, not only will I not sue you, but I will pay you $60,000. My eyes finally found them in the darkness. I was so shocked that at first I didn't realize what was happening. My eyes widened even further when I finally processed the scene. No, Danny, no, she said. I can explain everything. At that moment, I heard a sound from the far corner of the room, but I was still in shock from what was happening with Lena. Lena, what are you doing? I asked, still in disbelief. The door to the side of the room opened, and the same fat policeman who had been there when I saved Lena came out, still pulling up his pants. She beat him with that pipe, he said. The door behind me opened again, and Maggie Stevenson entered the room to prepare for her speech. Her eyes widened as she looked around the room and saw Sebastian on the floor, with Lena still standing over him, looking guilty. Danny, what's going on here? Maggie asked. 
Ugh, Sebastian making sounds. I need an ambulance. This crazy woman came into the room and started hitting me. Lena kicked him furiously. Miss, can you explain your actions? Asked the policeman. I came in here to use the restroom instead of the one outside. I have irritable bowel syndrome, and sometimes it hurts to walk. I saw her coming after this guy, and he started talking about making him sign some documents. I wanted to try to stop her, but I couldn't get out with my pants down, and I needed to wipe myself. Do you know these two? The policeman asked. Wait a minute, he said, pointing at Lena and me. I know you too. Yes, I said. This guy is the one she left me for. He deceived me, stole all my money, and left town, leaving me to pay for a lot of things he bought. According to the police, he did this to many women, the richer, the better. Lena, said Maggie, her eyes hardening. Call your precinct and ask them to check it against the database. He should still have warrants in my file. Is it true? Maggie asked Sebastian, who turned away from her. I was impressed by your speech, Mr. Boone, Maggie said, taking the ring off her finger and throwing it on the floor. Please call me Daniel, my friends call me Danny, I said. Perhaps we can collaborate in the future, she said, turning to leave. Wait! Sebastian shouted. Looks like you lost your fiancé and got kicked by a girl on the same day. You sly one, the policeman said. And if what this lady says is true, you're going to jail for a long time. Danny, what are you doing here? Lena asked. You called me a woman of easy virtue. What documents did you want him to sign? Were you following me? I guess I should have expected this. You will never trust me again, but it's my fault. What documents did you want me to sign? She snatched the documents from me. Listen, man, Sebastian said. If you can convince this crazy woman to drop the charges against me, I'll sign the papers and drop the assault charges against her. We'll be even. Lena suddenly started laughing hysterically. Danny, he won't sign anything. He can't, you idiot. Paramedics arrived and took Sebastian to the hospital. Lena was arrested and taken to the police station for processing. The last thing she said to me was, see you at the station. Don't waste our money and don't let him trick you into signing something. I have a folder of documents in the top drawer of my dresser at home. Can you bring it to me? I was confused. I have to admit that I was relieved to find out that Lena didn't cheat on me this time, but I was still angry. It seemed like she didn't want me to have any rights to Ella. I quickly went home and took out the folder. I didn't look at the documents because I didn't have time. I called my lawyer and asked him to figure out how to get Lena out on bail. Two hours later, she was already being processed for release. My lawyer spoke with Sebastian's assigned public defender, and they came to an agreement. Lena was facing a charge of assault with intent to cause serious harm. She was confident that she could fight back. The charges against Sebastian were related to theft and fraud. He had more charges, but they were less serious, and the statute of limitations had probably already expired for some of them. The lawyers met and decided to drop all charges. I'm angry that man got what he deserved, Lena spat. And stay away from that Maggie. I didn't like the way she looked at you. Why should I care what you think? I spat back. You didn't make your lover sign the papers. She started laughing again. Lena, this is not funny, I said. What would happen to Ella if you died or became seriously ill? She would have stayed with her father, Lena said with a shrug. That is life. I couldn't understand how she could be so calm about it. Danny, stop the car, she said. We were near the park, so I turned into the parking lot. We got out of the car and walked to a park bench. Danny, we need to talk, she said. I've heard that before, I replied. I won't like this, right? Danny, I've been talking to my doctor a lot lately. She referred me to a specialist. Have you noticed that I've been a little weird lately? I nodded. It's because you were excited to see Sebastian again, I said. But I think your relationship has gone bad. Maybe you don't love him as much as you thought. Maybe I don't like that idiot at all, she spat, which would be different from last time. Actually, it's just like last time, I said. I have a condition, Danny. 
Most women go through this, but I have a particularly severe reaction. When I got pregnant, I became mentally unstable. I'm just not responsible for my actions. That's what happened last time. A hormone imbalance makes me do stupid things. So when you got pregnant with Ella, it made you attack Sebastian, and that's why he kicked you out last time? I asked. No, dumbass, she spat. Sebastian didn't get me pregnant. I was already pregnant when I left you, and I hadn't slept with him yet. I didn't know I was pregnant then, and I also didn't know about my condition, which makes me mentally unstable. The stupid thing I did last time was believe his lies and leave you. It didn't make sense. Why would I leave you for someone else? Sebastian offered a way out of his madness, but as I kept telling you, as soon as I left, I realized I had made a mistake. So, I have a daughter? No, dumbass, she said. You have two children. I think this one will be a boy, but Ella is mine. I asked, still in shock. She nodded. I scrunched my face in anger. Why didn't you ever tell me? I've told you quite a lot, Danny, she said. But honestly, since we moved in with you, I've heard the same thing every damn day. Her voice became deeper as she tried to imitate my voice and manner of speaking. I don't trust that damn Lena. She's a woman of easy virtue. She left me, so if that was your attitude towards me, why would you believe anything I say? She asked. The document folder was right on my dresser. Have you ever looked in it? Why would I? I answered. She picked up one of the documents. Danny, you've loved this little girl since you helped bring her into the world. She calls you daddy every day, and you love it, but you never even asked what her full name was. You went from calling her baby Lena to baby to Ella. Here's her birth certificate. I was shocked. Not only was I listed as the father, but Ella wasn't just Ella, her full name was Daniela K. Boone. Lena named her after me. The smile on my face was huge until I noticed that Lena was not smiling. So you really thought I wanted to go back to that idiot? She asked. I nodded. That's why you didn't want to have an intimate with me last night, right? I nodded again. You still don't trust me, right? I shook my head. Well, you have decisions to make, mister, she said, looking at me. Danny, I'm with you, and I put up with all your crap because I love you. She stopped and looked at me. I love you, and from now on, I will tell you that whenever I want. And you know what? Regardless of whether you trust me or not, you love me too. Danny, you could have left me in the hospital until Ella was born, or you could have sent me back to the shelter any time, but you didn't. So you can admit it, you love me too. I guess you might not like what I did, but now you can understand how I can do stupid things when I'm pregnant. People in the park watched as this little woman poked me in the face and told me off. And you need to start being more responsible. How much money do we have in savings? You are going to try to buy your own daughter from that man, even though she's not even his. We need that money. Are you going to give up your home office for a new baby? Because if not, that means I'll have to move in with you. That means the two of us will have to share a room. No sending me back to my room when you're mad at me. And maybe we could spend some of that money on vacation. I finally silenced her by kissing her. Perhaps we could even get married again, I asked her. Her smile lit up the park, but then she frowned. Danny, it will be up to you, she said quietly. I know what I want but you need to feel like you can trust me and that I'm the one you want to be with forever. But next time I get pregnant and go crazy, just tie me down or kick my fifth place. This won't go away, because it will be much less painful than losing you again. Let's go home before your daughter drives your sister-in-law crazy. That was two weeks ago, and I've been trying to make a decision ever since. I have to admit that Lena really fooled me twice. The second time I was sure she would leave me again, but I'm glad I was wrong. My life is much better with her than without her. The old man in front of me looked at me as if he couldn't help me decide. So, should I buy the ring or not? I asked. Do you love her? He asked. Yes, I answered. Have you forgiven her? He asked. Yes, I said a little hesitantly. Do you trust her again? He asked. 
I'm not sure I'll ever be able to trust anyone the way I trusted her, I said. She might get pregnant again and go crazy. Two out of three isn't bad, he said. I'll wrap it for you. Will it be cash or credit card? What do you think of our concluding part of the story? In my opinion, the best part of the story was this one because it revealed everything that was hidden in the first part. What do you think? Write in the comments. See you in the comments.